Welcome to Bayesian statistics, continuous random variables and probability distributions. Okay, so what we've been talking about in the last video and this video is how do I measure the outcome of an experiment, right? So you're going to do an experiment and something's going to happen and then you want to be able to measure it. And this is important because most scientific endeavors have numbers in them, right? Um, so we, we want to be able to turn what we see from our experiment into a number. So how do I measure the outcome of an experiment? Well, in the last one, we talked about discrete ones. What about this? This is a fish. It's a shad. Um, how do I measure that? And you might think, well, they could measure the weight. That's one way. I can measure the length. I could measure the width. And all of these are viable measurements. But the point is, is you have to clearly define what you're going to measure. So make sure it's clearly defined and that everybody understands what you're measuring. So a random variable is the same in this case as it was in the last case. So a random variable is just a function that goes from the sample space to the real line. So it takes our something that happens from our experiment, that's what's in the sample space, and assigns it a number, which is what the real line is. Um, so if I were to measure the weight in milligrams of this fish, how do I summarize that? Well, I would need lots of fish, and I'm just going to say continuous outcomes are kind of difficult. Could I just count all the fish of the same weight and kind of put them together? I mean, that would be one way of doing it. Um, there's a problem, though. So if I catch a whole bunch of fish, look at this. None of those fish are the same size. And how do I know they're not the same size? Because I made the picture. But anyway, in reality, I can't expect every single fish to be exactly the same size or even two of them to be the same size. So that's part of the problem. Um, when you're looking at a goal or no goal, it's clearly a goal or it's not a goal. It's a miss. Here, it's not so clear what is what. So we're going to measure them, but we can't say that they're all going to be the same in that situation. So... And cat, in, in this, you have to think about this. How many possible sizes of fish are there? It's like, oh, well, you could keep subdividing and subdividing your scale, and you'll find that you can't come up with a number of possible sizes. It, it's impossible to come up with a number of possible sizes that the fish could be. So, um, what we're going to do is say we're going to say a random variable that assigns an uncountable number of values is called a continuous random variable. So instead of just assigning numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, we're going to have a whole bunch of decimals involved, and there's going to be uncountably many of these. We're not going to be able to count how many outcomes there are. So that causes problems with this idea of equally likelihood scenario. Um, so think about this. If I have uncountably many outcomes that means there's going to be an infinite number and actually could be more than an infinite number but we're not going to get into cardinality of sets here uh what we can say is that measuring the size of the sample space is no longer going to be meaningful because it's going to be an incredibly large number which i'm just going to put down as infinity and if we let e be the event that one has one outcome in it well that's 1 over infinity, and I know if you're a mathematician, you're going to scream at me. But remember, this course is designed for people who aren't mathematicians. Uh, but they do have some reasonable math background in the sense that they can use order of operations and stuff. But n the key here is it's equal to 0. Um, and this causes a big problem, by the way, because this means the probability that x equals little x is equal to 0 which is not really useful, and I'm going to illustrate that here in just a second. So we're going to need a different way of looking at this. So instead of looking at the probability x equals little x, why don't we look at, look at the values less than x. Okay, that's something we can count. We can say, is it bigger than this or less than that? Well, it's less than that, so it gets counted. So that's easy to handle. And this is what's called a cumulative probability distribution, and we'll call this a CDF. So if I keep saying CDF, this is what I'm referring to. All right, so here it would be the data by itself. And if I were to put the probability on how high it is here, remember, each one has probability zero. So it's down here. And this is kind of difficult to look at, or at least I think it's difficult to look at. I mean, I can see things are spread out, but I can't really see how things are changing. 
But if I put a CDF on it, which is this, uh, this is an empirical one, uh, which is this red line, I can quickly see, oh, wait, okay, so if I look at two, I can come up here, come over, and it looks like the probability of being less than two is about 0.3. And that's meaningful, right? The probability of being less than uh, 6 is around 0.8. So that gives me a lot of information about the fish and their sizes, not relative to a specific size and saying, what is the probability that it's specifically this size? But what's the probability that it's bigger than this or less than this? And a lot of people can think easily that way. And the great thing about this is as you get more data, this curve gets smoother. OK, and this is uh, this is nice because what we're ultimately interested in is the cumulative probability distribution for the population. Right. This would be because for all possible fish. OK, because uh, when we were looking at three goals, we could write down the population. Right. It only there were only eight outcomes in it. Uh, you could write down the whole population of possible outcomes. Here we can't do that, but we can get a distribution for the population here for uncountably many outcomes. And this really needs to go continuous out, uh, continues out way to the right here. But I'm, I'm just trying to get a picture for you. All right, so CDF. Well, the idea actually works with discrete distributions as well. So keep that in mind. This is not just a requirement for continuous probability distributions. It works there just as well as it does uh, in, in this situation. The problem is, is it doesn't tell us how to think about individual values. And that's what we actually like to do. We actually like to think about individual values. And so we need one more video before we get to Bayesian statistics that tells us how to think about individual values for continuous random variables. All right, so we're here. We're almost to the point where we can actually start doing some Bayesian statistics. Uh, we need to talk about uh, actually parameters and probability distributions and how to get uh, the actual uh, individual valued ones, which are probability density functions. But we're going to work on that. And once we have those two, we'll be able to talk about Bayesian statistics in an actual framework where you know what's going on instead of just some mindless computer program. All right. So we're going to move on to the next video and see you there.